Section 11.1, Space Figures and Cross-Sections. Polyhedron. A polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure whose surfaces are polygons. Here I have displayed five polyhedrons. Each figure is made up of polygons. In our red figure, we have a rectangular base with triangles. In our yellow figure, we have a base that's a pentagon with triangles. In this figure, I have a polyhedron that is made up of all triangles. The green figure is made up of rectangles and squares. And our blue figure is made up of rectangles and pentagons. Again, a polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure which is made up of surfaces that are polygons. We have to identify the parts of a polyhedron. First, we have a face. Each polygon on the polyhedron is a face. Here I have the term face, and it's pointing to two surfaces. But in this figure, we actually have six faces. We have the front, the back, the left, and the right, which are four, and the top and bottom. That makes a total of six in this polyhedron. Edges. A segment that is formed by the intersection of two faces. Again, I have on display by the term edge two of them. But we have many edges inside of this figure. We can count edges all the way around. One, two, three, four, going around the figure. And on the top, again, one, two, three, four. That would give us a total of eight so far. On the bottom, again, one, two, three, four. So in this figure, we actually have 12 edges. Our next term is a vertex, a point where three or more edges intersect. Again, the term vertex, I have them displayed here with two arrows, but we have more than just two in the figure. One, two, three, four vertices on the base, and one, two, three, four vertices on the top of the diagram. So therefore, in this polyhedron, I have eight vertices. In this example, we're given a polyhedron. They want us to determine how many vertices, edges, and faces there are in the diagram, and then list them. Vertices. Remember, vertices from the previous slide is the intersection of three or more edges. In this diagram, I have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. And they want us to name them. That would be points A, B, C, D, E, and F. And that would give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next, they want us to determine the edges. Remember, from the previous slide, an edge is an intersection of the polygons. In this diagram, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have nine edges. And those edges are, let's look at the top, segment A, F, F, E, A, E, A, B, F, C, E, D, and the bottom, B, C, C, D, and B, D. Let's count to make sure we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the last thing we want to determine are the faces. And we know from the previous slide, the faces are the polygons in the figure. Here I have one on the top, one on the bottom, and the left and right, and the back. Therefore, in this figure, I have five faces. My faces are triangle, the bottom one, B, C, D, the top triangle, A, F, E, and the rectangles forming the sides, 
So I have rectangle, A, F, C, B, rectangle, F, E, D, C, and rectangle, A, E, D, B. And that would give me one, two, three, four, five faces. On this slide, we want to define Euler's formula. The number of faces represented in our formula with the variable f, vertices represented in the formula with variable v, and edges represented in the formula with variable e of a polyhedron are related by the formula. Faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. In other words, if I knew two of the three variables, I could determine a third variable by substituting in and simplifying for that variable. Let's verify Euler's formula. Here, F is faces. And in this polyhedron, I have the front face, the back face, which is two, then three, four, five, six, and seven. I have seven faces. Plus the vertices. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 10 vertices. And edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Simplifying both sides, I get 7 plus 10 is 17. 15 plus 2 is 17. Let's go back one slide and verify the formula here. So Euler's formula is F plus V equals E plus 2. We did most of the work while working through the example. Here, vertices is 6. Faces is 5. Edges we have 9 plus 2. Simplifying both sides, 11 equals 11. Both of these examples verify Euler's formula. On this example, they want us to use that formula to find the missing numbers. Remember the formula, faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. Substitute in our known variables. Faces, I have 6. Edges. I have 10, 2 is the constant, vertices is what I'm trying to determine. Simplify the equation, V equals, when I subtract 6 on both sides, 10 plus 2 is 12 minus 6, I have 6 vertices. On the next example, faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. Substituting in our known variables, faces I have 7. Vertices, I have 10. Edges is unknown, plus 2. 17 equals E plus 2. Therefore, my edges equals 15. Our next definition is cross-section. A cross-section is the intersection of a solid and a plane. In other words, think of a sheet of paper cutting a solid into a very thin slice. For example, here I have a cylinder. That represents my solid. If I would cut through with a thin sh sheet of paper, the cross-section would be a circle. Here I have a polyhedron with faces, edges, and vertices. If I cut through with a thin sheet of paper, I would have a cross-section that would be a pentagon. Therefore, from this example, we know that a cross-section is going to be the shape of the figure from that thin slice going through the solid. In this example, they want us to describe the cross-section. Here I'm given a polyhedron. Again, I have edges, faces, and vertices. I realize the base is a triangle. Therefore, the shape of the figure going up is going to have a triangle as a cross-section when I cut it with that thin sheet of paper. So the cross-section is a triangle. Here I have a 
polyhedron. And when I slice this with a thin sheet of paper, the shape that's going to be represented is going to be a rectangle. I cannot verify that this is a square because I don't know if all the edges are congruent with the base.